let's get started with feeling a bit uneasy about um, statistics and what that really means. We often hear that when students come to our tutoring, that you know, students feel a little bit uneasy, they don't know how to start, they might have some um, less than favorable experiences you know, in the past, maybe in earlier statistics course or in earlier college years. It actually has a name in the academic literature. That trepidation that you might feel towards statistics is called stats anxiety. Now, do not confuse that with math anxiety. That is not the same thing. When I hear a student tell me that they are uneasy about their statistics course because they have math anxiety, then I, you know, um, feel a sense of relief because then nothing is lost. Math deals with numbers in an abstract way, while stats deals with numbers in a more concrete way. We use statistics to tell, to tell a story about the data. And for that, we collect data, usually from um, real people. And we use variables and tests to tell the story of those people. It becomes very interpretive. You know, it's not as much uh, focused on formulas as you think. And for most of the courses, you'll actually be working with a statistical program. So that's where the formulas operate behind the scenes for you there. If you have feelings of anxiety, there are ways to overcome that. When I was uh, reading up on stats anxiety in the academic literature, I actually learned that a, you know, an, a modest level of stats anxiety can work as a motivator. You know, it will keep you on your toes. It will get you charged from the first week. And, and that is the best approach to take, right? It's not a course you can hide from, especially at the graduate level. These are required courses. And the um, quantitative reasoning and analysis courses are courses that every doctoral student will take. But I think you know the best way to overcome that trepidation is with uh, preparation from the first week onward. Now, if you ever feel that you have a level of anxiety that is off the charts, then by all means, you know that that should not be there. You shouldn't be that anxious about it. So if you sense that, please talk to your instructor or come talk to us as tutors because we can help you. Now that you're in, in your first week and you're here visiting this webinar, that is a good sign to me because that means you're taking charge, charge of, your, of your stats uh, course. So kudos to that. And keep in mind, statistics is a brand new language. Most of you will come into this course with you know, a lack of what the terms mean. That's because you you know you haven't been using them yet. You're not used to it. Brand new language, brand new terms. Some of these terms are just difficult statistical concepts, and these concepts will have to percolate in the brain. So give yourself some time there. I sometimes compare this to the experience that somebody will wake you up on a Monday morning and ask you to write a paper in Swahili. You know, while you do not speak or write Swahili, right? That's what it feels like. It takes time to develop that. So give yourself that time. I also want to mention there are never silly questions. As a tutor, I have never had a student ask me questions that did not make sense. The only questions that sometimes baffle me are questions that show a lack in my skill, you know, that push me to go back to the literature and learn a bit more. But from my personal experience, if you have a, a, a question or if I have a question that makes me feel a little silly about asking it, that is often a sign that I'm not comprehending the concepts completely. And if I do not have that full command, then an extra question truly makes sense. You know, and as students, you know, we love, love talking about statistics and as do instructors at Walden. So reach out to your instructor and reach out to your tutors and reach out to people around you and with these questions, it will help clear up these concepts. In this first week, you know, one of the first things that you really want to do is make sure that you have the statistical program installed on your computer. I know that in the 8210 course, for most of the students in our audience, you have not um, had a need to work with SPSS because your post of last night was centered on that equation, that mathematical equation you know, with the independent and dependent variable. But at this point, it would be great if you had um, SPSS downloaded and installed. Please do not wait till the end of the week to do that because it's a big statistical package and sometimes it can be a bit finicky and you want to allow yourself some time to go to student support and ask for help should anything go wrong with that installation process. 
for people in the advanced course who are coming back for more fun in, in statistics, it's well possible that you have, that your version on your computer is now outdated or that your licensing key is outdated because they frequently frequently are updated. So make sure that you're on the right uh, version and that your license is up to date. If not, reach out to student support and they can help you. And I recommend downloading the data sets in your classroom and I'll show you what that looks like on my computer. When I um, Go into SPSS, I mean, I make sure when I present that I have a data set available. This is the high school longitudinal data set. It says so on the top left uh, corner, HS longitudinal study. Longitudinal means that it was measured at more than one time. Just so you know, the data sets that you'll be working with are real data sets. This truly is information that is collected from our high school students in all of the United States to take the temperature of, of their skills. It's important for us to know how our high school students are doing because it tells us how they're set up to go to college and maybe even after. So that is one of the data sets. The second data set that you'll be working with in the 8210 course is the Afrobarometer. That data set takes the temperature of the democracy in African countries, if you will. It centers more on how participants feel about democracy, what their living conditions are, how they feel about the government and um, their trust in the police and matters like that. These are just completely different questions than we would ask here in the United States. It truly is an African data set. Again, it's a real data set. I think it um, is collected every two years. And researchers truly go to Africa into the field with surveys to have participants answer these questions. The third data set is the um, GSS data set. That is the data set that you will be working with for most Wednesday nights. GSS stands for General Social Survey, and this data set measures the, the social temperature in the United States. And all the participants that um, are on this data set are located in the, in the United States. It talks about income and work Yep, status, your screen looks wonderful. Political party, you know, kind of where the people are in our country. Now, I want to show you something here where these data sets are on my computer. So what I've done here is um, I've, of course, gone into these classrooms and I've clicked on these data sets. I want you to um, realize that every time you click on these, you're actually downloading them. So you really only have to click on them once in week one and then they will be available for you in your download folder. But I recommend bringing these data sets over into a classroom folder. As you can see here on the screen, I've um, created an example of some courses here at Walden. Here is the 8210 course. I've um, named it neatly. Um, organizing your um, courses at Walden is very uh, beneficial to you when you get to the dissertation process. I fulfilled my uh, degree at Walden as well. And I can tell you during my dissertation process, oh, absolutely. I used to grab um, back. And that thank goodness that I, that I organized my computer courses. the way you're demonstrating, because when I, I needed to review some of that foundational information that I chose as my problem, on a I'm easily able to go back to that class. Nonetheless, and if you, you rename you your assignment you away from your last name in the week and you name it something that you can recognize, it's really easy to go back and pull it up. It is. It really is. If you name um, every week um, one assignment for every course, week one assignment, and you place them all on your desktop, you can imagine how difficult it is to differentiate between those um, documents. As you can see here, this is just an example, but these are the names of the weeks in the 8210 course. I will share with you that I never used to name things while I was in a course, but I always did that um, in the off, in the, during the off time when I really understood the names of the weeks. And I organize my, organize my computer like that. You can see here in the week one, there is a paper, the variables paper. It's the assignment that you have coming up for this Sunday in the 8210 course. And here's the discussion post from last night, right? The equation. So I, I um, recommend organizing your courses like that. Uh, the data sets for the 8210 course are placed in here. So you can see that that is um, very handy to have these on your computer because then you do not have to go back to the classroom all the time and you can uh, work off screen. And that's really handy thinking about, you know, if there was ever a problem, um, um, you know, with a storm or your internet goes out. Yep, it looks wonderful. You do not have that uh, 
issue. The same goes for the syllabus. I recommend going into the classroom and, and making a PDF file of the syllabus. So this is the syllabus of the 8210 course. I went into the classroom and via the print command, I created this uh, PDF. And I mean, you don't have to study your syllabus, but if a good read through in week one is very helpful because it gives you a good idea of the buildup of the course. When you read through the 8210 course, you will recognize what I mentioned earlier. Your posts as, um, for the weeks, your Wednesday posts, for the most part, will focus on the GSS data set, the general social sur survey. Your assignment will be the exact same task that you ran on Wednesday, but you get to run it again with the choice of two different data sets, right? It's good to know that. That also gives you that time between Wednesday and Sunday to deepen your learning experience about that test and that statistical um, activity. For most weeks, you will have a second assignment due. You'll be asked to go to the library and find a peer-reviewed article, and you're asked to critique the use of a statistical test um, in that article. So it's really good to know that. So bring that document forward, uh, put it on your computer, in your named course folder, and you can't go wrong with that. And it also helps you to work offline again. And here is the, um, the course document for the 8260 course. Again, it's a good idea to read through these um, weeks. The um, 8260 course is quite unique because it has a final paper due in week 11. At the same time, you're asked to um, present a video, a PowerPoint in a video presentation about that final paper. And you can imagine that that takes a lot out of week 11 to get all that prepared in time. So it you know, makes sense to start working on that um, paper maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, usually with um, students in the advanced course as tutors, we um, start talking about the final paper early on in the term. Um, I want to uh, comment um, about, uh, one, make one comment about the advanced course. It makes sense to review the stats concepts um, that you learned in the earlier course. I actually have a couple of students on my schedule still this week who are who have booked a tutoring session with me for that purpose. And the the completion point of the first course, the introduction to quantitative reasoning and analysis, becomes the starting point of the advanced course. And usually there is at least one term or maybe even more terms between the end of the one course and the start of the other course. Statistics is not something that is easily retained. And don't think that that's just you. We all suffer from that. So it helps to freshen up, you know, the knowledge a bit. You know, what is a p-value? What is a confidence interval? What are compare means tests? And how are they different from regression models? And so on and so forth. So take advantage of that time that you still have this week and review some of your um, stats concepts. <laughs>